Hello and welcome to my second tutorial for animating with constraints. Um, if you watched the first one, uh, it was about showing you how to do prop animation where the prop was uh, held by the character and it showed you my general setup for making what I call zero groups to use with the constraints for the props. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to do the same thing but kind of in reverse. Uh, this time we're going to look at it where the prop is actually going to be leading the character's hands. Where something like what I've got right here, where it kind of looks like this character is going to push something really heavy. Maybe this object really heavy is what you want to be controlling the hands rather than having the hands control the prop. So the idea behind it is the same as before. Um, keep in mind when setting up uh, props and constraints. It's best to try and do it before you get really far into the animation just because it becomes easier down the line if you've already got everything set up and you can just turn constraints on and off or switch between them or whatever you want to do. Um, also it gets you in the habit of thinking how you're going to set things up where like uh, like what I'm going to show you right here let's say this is a fridge and the character is moving the fridge well if the object's going to be really heavy May, you want to think about it being the leader or whether you're going to have the character control it and getting yourself in the mindset of thinking about all this beforehand technically getting all the technical stuff out uh, either pre or during the blocking is absolutely probably the best way to go about setting uh, constraints and stuff like this up alright so to get into this one just like we did last time here we've got my uh, cube which is the refrigerator and rename that real quick. All right, and then here we have the free rig beefy, and I've positioned him just in a really rough pose for uh, pushing. And I do not have anything constrained yet. If I move the block, it's good. Uh, the hands are still where they are because they're not constrained to anything. Um, so let me show you how to do this. And I recommend personally keeping the hands in IK whenever. Uh, obviously a character is touching something or leaning on something. Sometimes, uh, any any time that the prop is going to be controlling the character's hands, it's also probably a better practice to keep it in IK, just because it makes things a little bit easier. Um, but, alright, so if you have seen the first video, then you know what I like to call, I like to create zero groups, which is a group above whatever the prop, or in this case the character's hand, is going to be constrained to something else. So in this case, if I just did what some people would do generically and take both hands and make them the uh, servants to this, uh, what do you call it, to the fridge, where you select the fridge and then just immediately select the controller on the hand and then parent constrain them. Now I do get this effect where I can move the block and the hand will move. However, I can't set any keys on this controller because they'll just be lost. Which means as I'm pushing, like if you were doing a longer animation where you've got the character pushing the fridge uh, around a scene, you're probably going to want to shift the hand a little bit or move it up and down on the fridge, which you can't do if you've directly constrained the controller here. So let me just set one and set six. Just move it a little bit. And if I set this on frame one, and then here on frame six, if I try and rotate it, all right, so you can see that I've rotated it here. I'm going to go back to one. Now I've just lost everything. So you can't set any keys uh, on that controller, and you've effectively locked yourself out of being able to animate with it. Um, let me undo all that. So in order to get around that, let me make sure everything is off. All right, go back a couple more. All right, there we go. All right, so in order to get around that, you do the same thing like I did with the prop, where you're going to create a group above the hand controller, and then you're going to constrain that to the fridge. So I'm just going to group this, and you're going to want to find that. It's you're going to have to have the outliner open when you go to set the constraint because you're going to want to click on this group directly. So I'm going to select this as the master, 
select this group that I just made as the servant. Now I'm going to parent constraint. And I apologize, uh, I've got a hotkey set up once again for parent constraining, so if you don't know, it's just go to constrain with both things selected and then go to parent. Alright, so now I've got the character, the hands are moving with the fridge. Alright, here, let me set this one up as well. A little chuggy, but alright. So let me create a group here. And once again, got to find that. Group 2 right here. Select that. Select the group. Parent constrain it. So now, I've got both of these hands being controlled by the fridge. So now he's kind of pushing it. Um, and now, if you'll notice, if I go ahead, select all three of these. I don't know if I got it. Yeah, let me get the hand. So we get the hand. We got the fridge and we got this hand. So I'm going to set a key on, let's just do 1 and 8. And then here on uh, 8, I'm going to take the fridge. Oops. Go to frame 8. I'm just going to take the fridge and move it. And let's move, let's move this hand up a little bit and we can take this hand move it down a little bit so now if I swap back and forth between them you can see now I can actually key the hand controllers while they're still constrained to the fridge and in this case the fridge is actually leading the hands so wherever the fridge goes or whatever happens to the fridge will affect the hands but the hands will not affect the fridge and like I said I prefer using uh, the props be the masters uh, of the constraints if the object's heavier and it's not gonna it probably won't move around as much like this fridge it's not gonna move around as much as you know the character will meaning it's you kinda have to do less animation for the hands because you're just pushing this object and your hands are gonna stay they're not gonna do a whole lot of moving because you wanna keep a firm grip on whatever you're pushing or holding you wanna make it look like you've got a pretty cemented uh, grasp on what you're uh, handling. Um, so yeah, I think that covers uh, if you want to have like a heavier object or a prop lead the hands and this is also uh, a setup for chances are you're not going to be taking the hands off of the prop in a shot like this. I'm gonna do another tutorial about uh, constraint switching so if you wanted to have the character let go of the fridge it's a, a little bit different you just have to set up actually a couple more constraints, but save that for another tutorial. So I hope that this one helps as well. It's a lot. It's very similar to the first one, but it's just a bit of the reverse. Um, oh, I should note that uh, the only time that this uh, setting up the constraints with the group above the hand controllers, uh, it becomes an issue when you have a character that's referenced into a scene. Um, it may not always work just because. Uh, the reference may be read, it may come up as read only. Um, if you're able to, then importing the rig is the quickest way to fix that. Uh, but if you're unable to import the rig, then you might have to, uh, if the character's hand has a gimbal control, then what you can do is you can use the main controller as the zero group and then do all the animation for the hand on the gimbal controller. Um, or you could constrain maybe the, um, what do you call it, like the skin joint of the hand, or not the joint, but the, um, if you maybe constrain like the FK hand, and then try and use the IK hand to animate, something like that. It becomes an issue, setting it up like this just becomes an issue uh, when you get certain reference characters because they become read-only, but if you can, the quickest thing to do is just take the regular IK controller for the hands, make a group above it, and then use that uh, that zero group to uh, set up your constraints. So I hope that that was helpful and I'll have some more coming, some more tutorials about animating with constraints and props shortly.